Hey guys, welcome to another video for askacpa.co and today we're going to be covering one of the most complicated topics in QuickBooks Online, payroll. If you have one employee or a large team, processing payroll ac accurately can be a stressful experience. In this video, we'll walk you through each step from setting up payroll to running your first payroll cycle to making sure your payroll taxes are paid properly. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any updates. We'll be putting out new videos weekly on QuickBooks and tax tips and tricks to help you minimize your tax liability. So do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button down below as it helps spread the word and allows other people to find the channel. All right guys, let's jump into the video. All right, so before we can run a payroll, you first need to add the payroll feature to your QuickBooks Online account. Now there are three different versions of payroll that QuickBooks Online offers. They vary in price and services, so I'll let you read those over and read over the options so you can make your own decision. All three options are great. The simple start is perfect for a small team where everyone is paid salary or you have another software that you're using to track hours. The essentials package offers everything simple start has but also adds a different uh, a few additional features like tracking um, time tracking and includes up to three users QuickBooks online um, QuickBooks plus is a more full service payroll and it's great if you're um, maybe if you've never run payroll before and you want to want some assistance and making sure everything is set up properly if you're transferring your payroll from another provider, then I would recommend using QuickBooks Plus as it can be a little more tricky in the initial year since you need to pull over the payroll information to date um, so your W-2s and W-3s are accurate. All right, so now let's jump over to the QuickBooks um, file and we'll take a look at how to run a payroll. So from here you can see this is what your payroll is going to look like once you have it activated. There's the overview, there's your employees, contractors, workers comp, benefits, and compliance. For this video, we're just going to show you how to run a basic payroll and how to set up an employee to make sure that you have everything in there that you need. So first, let's take a look at the employees that are already in here. Uh, as you'll see, some are set up on an hourly basis, some are set up on an annual. Um, this is just a test company, a sample company that QuickBooks offers, so none of this information is, is real. But um, it just kind of gives you an example of how, th how it should look once everything is properly set up. So they have these set up for check, and they have a couple set up for direct deposit. Let's go into Sarah's and adjust her comp. Um, just so you can kind of see what information is required in here. So you have all her personal information, her name, email address, date of birth, home address, social security number, um, gender, phone number, and then federal tax withholding information. You'd get this from her W-9 that she would fill out when she first becomes an employee. You want to get that I-9 and um, W-9 on file. And then their, their payment method, you also want to ask them once you add an employee for their direct deposit information, um, either their checking account information um, where you can transfer those funds to. And then some of the employment details are like when they're, when they're hired, um, what their status is. When, once an employee leaves, you want to make sure you change that status to non-active. And then their comp. Um, you can go in and edit any of this information. This is salary. Let's let's increase this to 140. Um, and common pay types, overtime, no pay off. Okay, that's all fine. And as you'll see, her comp has changed there to 140 deductions and contributions. She has health insurance that she pays $75 a check for. Um, so that is all good. So that's the employee list. So to add a new employee, you simply go here, select add an employee, and then you just want to fill in that information um, for each employee. 
Now let's look at how to run a payroll cycle. So you go over here to run payroll. And now you'll have each employee listed their payment method, whether you're gonna write them a check or it's gonna go through direct deposit. If they are on salary, it's gonna go ahead and have all that information included. If you wanna take an employee off, maybe they didn't work at all for this pay period, you can just unclick them and then they'll not be included in this payroll cycle. Um, this is their regular pay and then their overtime pay, sick hours and vacation pay. So let's go ahead and say this guy, John worked 25 hours. We'll say Amy worked 50 hours and Jordan worked, this is probably two weeks. So let's say Jordan worked 80 hours and he worked 15 hours of overtime. So as you can see, it calculates based upon their hourly rate and adds up the total uh, payment amount right there and that's the amount that's going to be pulled from your account so now you can preview payroll and so the net pay which will be go which will be paid to your employees um, and then the employees withholdings and then the employers portion of the payroll taxes and this is just a really good summary. You just want to kind of go through and make sure that everything looks accurate. Um, and then you can even compare it to last check. Where you can see their current pay, their last payment, and you can determine if there's any differences. Of course, there's federal income tax and then there um, FICA taxes, Social Security, Medicare, and then state income tax and state um, disability insurance and their medical insurance. So if you had any, like a retirement plan, this would show up under deductions as well. Once everything looks good and you have the payment amount, the payment date is all correct. You just want to make sure you double, triple check all this stuff. Make sure you look at the payment period, the pay date, when it's coming out, and then you go ahead and you submit payroll. Now before we look at how to process your payroll taxes in QuickBooks Online, let's take a quick look at the due dates for each tax report. So first you have your tax form 941, which is your employer's quarterly federal tax return. And this is just reporting your total wages, your number of employees, and your withholdings. Um, and your Social Security and Medicare payments made um, for each quarter. So Q1's report is reporting for payroll period January through March. And it's due the end of the following month of the payment period, so it's due April 30th. Um, Q2 is April through June, and that's due July 31st. Q3 is July through September, and that's due October 31st. And Q4 is October through December, and that's due January 31st. Again, all of these payroll reports should add up and tie out to your W-3, which is, um, you know, it, it's the summary of your all of your W-2s that you file at the end of the year. So another tax form that is due is your 940. This is your employer's annual federal unemployment tax return, and this is just due once a year, and it's due January 31st of the following um, tax year. Your tax form W-2s and W-3s, um, these are your wage and tax statements. Those are due on January 31st of the following year as well. I would try to get those done as early as possible um, so you don't have employees reaching out to you or if there's any... Um, errors or or issues that need to be addressed with your employees before um, before that due date you want to make sure you get those out as soon as possible um, 1099 NECs for non-employee comps those are due by January 31st so those are for all of your contractors um, again you want to get those W9s on file as soon as possible really um, before you you even issue um, your 1099s. You want to get those at, before you even issue the check for the work um, completed. Um, and then depending on the state you live in, 
there's going to be state withholdings and unemployment. Um, each state's different, but most of them will have a quarterly report that is due and then some kind of annual filing for the unemployment or if there's workers' comp, there'll be filings for those as well. Um, so those are so a few of the deadlines. I would uh, make sure you have all these on your calendar um, just to know that they're upcoming and just a reminder to go back and check in QuickBooks that um, that these have been filed and submitted. So ultimately, you are responsible to make sure that these reports are filed properly with the IRS. So let's jump back into the books and take a look at how to run these reports um, and pay these, file these taxes within QuickBooks Online. All right, so now if you jump over to taxes from the left-hand menu and select payroll taxes, this will show up as soon as you get your subscription registered um, payroll tax that will be um, listed there and then automated taxes and forms is on you can change this in your settings if you want to go in and manually do this it'll have action needed so if there's any payroll tax forms that um, need to be looked at or reviewed before they're submitted um, you'll go and see that here these are the payments that have been made so the 941 payment um, was submitted and that was paid for um, pay period 10-1 so just the full month of October and that goes into the Q4 941 uh, there's a couple California payments that have um, that have been paid or are upcoming um, and then you can come over here to filings and see what has been completed fortunately in this file there's there's nothing that has been <laughs> has been added here yet but um, once a quarterly report has been submitted you can go in and check and make sure that it ties out to all of your all of your reports out of out of um, out of the payroll reports as well so you just want to double check double check those before anything is filed um, again, this is in the taxes, in payroll taxes, um, and you can toggle between payments and filings. If you are new to QuickBooks Online, consider picking up a copy of my latest book, The Small Business Guide to QuickBooks Online, which can be found on Amazon, and I will leave a link in the description down below. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that like button. It really helps the algorithm. It helps other people find the videos, and we really appreciate it. All right, guys, we will catch you in the next video. Take care and have a great day.